In this video, we're going to be talking about the PlayStation 5. More specifically, we're going to be focusing on something that I think makes 2023 a particularly exciting year for anybody who owns a PlayStation 5 or plays on a PS5. Now, when we look back at 2022, I think it's safe to say that this was one of the best years for PlayStation Studios that we've ever seen. We have Polyphony Digital releasing Gran Turismo 7, Guerrilla Games releasing Horizon Forbidden West, Naughty Dog releasing The Last of Us Part 1, and finally Sony Santa Monica releasing what was my personal game of the year, God of War Ragnarok. So we can definitively say that it was an amazing year for PlayStation Studios and first party output. But the main problem that people I think look at with this is the fact that three out of these four games were cross-gen games, meaning that they released on the PlayStation 4 and therefore maybe certain aspects were ultimately held back. Now it's worth noting that these games that released on PS4, Horizon Forbidden West, GT7, Ragnarok, they were obviously developed first and foremost on the PS4. Uh, that's just where the development of the game started. But this is a little bit strange because this is not the way that Sony has traditionally handled new generations. The way Sony would usually handle it is cross-gen wouldn't really be a thing. The majority of the games, if not all the games that would release for the new console would be exclusive to that console, not releasing on the previous hardware. And that's obviously changed with the PS5. Now, the one game that was developed for just the PS5 seemingly was The Last of Us Part 1, but it's really difficult, I think, to count that as the standout PS5 only exclusive, considering at the end of the day, it is a remake of a PlayStation 3 game. Now, obviously, we can look to something like Demon's Souls Remake and say the same thing, and that game got a tremendous amount of praise, but there's a couple things. Not only was that a launch title, so, you know, we're a couple years removed from that, we're a couple years deeper into this new generation, but that was meant to kind of show at the launch of the PS5 what this console could achieve from a visual perspective. And since then, we've gotten games like Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, which I think have done an incredible job really showing uh, to a certain degree what can be achieved by development teams that are purely focused on the PS5 hardware. And this was the first game that really tried to take advantage of the PlayStation 5's unique uh, specifications. Now, since then, we haven't really seen anything like that. And going into 2023, this is what I think a lot of people are focused on. The fact that a lot, if not all, of the big upcoming PlayStation 5 exclusives are going to be PS5 only. In fact, there's not a single PlayStation exclusive that I can think of that is apparently going to be cross-gen. We're starting out the year with Forspoken, and it seems that, you know, the demo that came out for that game, it's a little bit mixed, it's a little bit divisive. There are people who are very excited there people were like, eh, I think I might end up passing on this. I'm not sold on it, but it is a PS5 only game. And then we look obviously to Final Fantasy 16, which is going to be a massive PS5 exclusive that comes out in June of this year. And that's it. It's a PS5 exclusive. It will be releasing on PC at some point, but there's no word on a PS4 version. And I think that that is a good thing. And obviously the big one in the room that being Spider-Man 2. Now, this is a game that's set to come out fall of 2023, and it is PS5 only. I have seen some people expressing a little bit of fear that maybe at the last moment, similar to what we saw happen with Gran Turismo 7, Sony might pull the rug out underneath PlayStation 5 owners and announce, actually, there is going to be a PS4 version of this game. This is something that we have seen not just from Sony, but from other developers and publishers where they announce a game, they make you think it's going to be a current gen only game, therefore making you believe that they're going to do some standout things, trying to take advantage of the hardware. Maybe we're going to see some stuff that we haven't seen yet. And then at the last moment, they announced, actually, there's going to be a PS4 version as well. I expect to see a lot less of that in 2023. And there are obviously reasons why this has went on for as long as it has. But I think it's safe to say that 2023 should be the year 
where we see this change quite dramatically. Now, the thing about Spider-Man 2 that I want to focus on here for a moment is we're talking about Insomniac Games. Insomniac Games released Spider-Man Miles Morales at the launch of the PS5. This was also a cross-gen game, but still looking at what they did with the PlayStation 5 port of Spider-Man 2018 and also Miles Morales, very impressive. Then the next year, we see what they can achieve with Ratchet and Clank with the part, which pushes the bar even further and impresses us even more now we look at spider-man 2 this is a game that's coming out you know in the third year of the ps5's life cycle from what i think is one of sony's most easily most talented development teams a team that has i think really i don't want to say carried the ps5 but in some ways carried the ps5 insomniac has done incredible work and to think that they're about to push the bar even further with spider-man 2 i really do believe that Spider-Man 2 could be the first game we see on PS5 that really blows people away. A lot of people are wondering why we haven't seen any footage of Spider-Man 2 yet. Personally, I think this is intentional. I think it's because Insomniac as well as Sony believe and know that they have something special in their hands here. It's Spider-Man. Everybody knows it's going to get a lot of attention. It's going to sell really well. People are very excited for it. It's a sequel. But the one thing that I think is going to really surprise people is just how incredible this game looks. And there is a chance, I don't want to speak too soon, nor do I want to make too many assumptions, but I think there is a pretty good chance, considering Insomniac tried to, you know, push the bar and do unique things with Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, we could see them do something very interesting and very unique with Spider-Man 2 on the PS5. That's my hope anyway, but one thing I am certain of is that once Spider-Man 2, I don't want to say launches, but once we actually see it in action for the first time, I think this is going to be the game that definitively ushers in the next generation. I feel like, again, for some people that was ripped apart, some people were incredibly impressed with Horizon Forbidden West, including myself. It's actually amazing what that game was able to achieve visually, considering it is a cross-gen game but people are ready to finally see what a console like the ps5 is capable of if we go back to 2020 and we think about what mark cerny talked about when he broke down the thought process that went behind the development of the ps5 he was really explaining that this console the way the io throughput is set up the speed of the console the way everything works together it has the potential to fundamentally change certain aspects of game development from the ground up and we obviously got very excited about this uh you know during the launch of the ps5 but i think you know the unfortunate reality that began to settle in was that it's going to take a couple of years before development teams are really able to do something like this and now that we are a couple of years into the ps5's life cycle i think it's now fair for people like myself and many other ps5 owners to begin to kind of Look around and see all right you know sony and playstation studios it's been a couple years you guys have been you know working hard obviously behind the scenes it's no secret that sony has quite a few games in development that have yet to even be announced or revealed properly so i think that 2023 is going to be such an important year for the ps5 specifically because this is going to be the first year where we see some I think some absolutely insane stuff. I think this is going to be the year that most PS5 owners have frankly been waiting for. And I know that I'm making assumptions and I said I didn't want to make too many, but it's hard not to. It's hard not to feel that sense of excitement that's kind of looming, you know, in the upcoming months and the coming year ahead. But, uh, you know, I guess where I will end this video is by saying that my personal expectations are pretty high for PlayStation and the PS5 in 2023. I think that there are some people that feel as though what Sony has announced right now, they feel like, you know, surely this can't be all of it. I mean, yes, these are big games, Final Fantasy 16, Spider-Man 2. But on top of 2023 being the year where we see the PS5 really kind of taken advantage of in a big way that we haven't seen yet, there's this looming sense of surprise, I guess is the word I will use to describe it and so that's where i'm going to leave it i just wanted to kind of make this video and have this conversation talk about you know why i believe 2023 is going to be a very big year for any ps5 owner and i've seen many of you guys talking about it and expressing your excitement i share that with you and so it's early in the year it's only january 
it's going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to it. At this point, I want you to leave your thoughts down in the comments below. I'll be interested to see what you have to say. Leave the video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon and feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.